Hello, hello, I'm back um, for this afternoon's haul. Uh, I wanted to come and show you something that I am trying. I'm trying something different. And these are called trifolds. Trifolds. And so I bought several of them to give them a try. If nothing else, they're, they're still art impressions stamps. And you can use them for the other uh, ranges of uh, designs. So it doesn't bother me to have something new. I, I just thought these were the cutest ever. I don't know when I seen them or how I came up on them. Uh, oh, I do. I think. No, I don't know. Um, I, I came up on them and I loved them and I ordered them and it was really quick shipping. The shipping for these was really quick. I want to say I placed this order on Friday and today is the following Thursday. And I think I got these today or yesterday. I don't know. One of the two. Quick shipping for this order. So anyway, you have a house scene, a gate scene, and a uh, like a chair and bird scene for this one. And this one is called the cottage it's called a cottage and then i purchased this one because it's like a little suburb town it's like a little a bunch of houses um and then so this one is called suburb and it's just a bunch of different houses and this one will be good it's the, the sentiment says from our house to yours so this will be a cute housewarming card or you can use the sentiments on other things, um, meaning the pictures on other things, and make a housewarming card. And, you know, AI stamps are always small, but these are rather large stamps, which leads to good size to color with. Okay? Then I got this one. This one, best wishes to you. Wishing you everything wonderful. When I seen it, I thought it was a wedding card, but then I realized it said best wishes. I mean, birthday wishes, excuse me. It said birthday wishes. And so then I realized it was a birthday card. Um, the one thing that I've um, noticed that um, I could take this off and not even stamp that and put my own sentiment in there. Um, it's not, it's, it's very bold and plain that you can just tape off, take you some painter's tape or regular tape or something and cover that up and never even see that. Um, so then you can put your own sentiment in there. So say you want to put, um, thank you in there, put your own little miniature thank you in there. So that's the gazebo. Then I picked up this one called Lake House and it's cute. It has like a little, um, boats, another house, and then some scenery, like uh, animal scenery. Really pretty. It's going to lead me to a lot of coloring. Then I have this one right here that is called the Harvest. And it's a house with a little harvest thing. And I, I, it's, it's a theme with me. And I, I love the country outdoors. I just don't like outside. <laughs> I love the scenery of it all. The look in the house or sit on the porch and not be in the midst of it. And then the last one I purchased was Shops. And it looks like it's a, like a country town with Shops. Um, and so I bought how many? One, two, three, four, five, six of them. And it'll just go along with my collection of um, art impression stamps. So um, that was these. And I was looking online trying to figure out how to do this. And it was driving me crazy. But I did come upon somebody who I was able to understand their instructions and create one of the cards. And so I did. I didn't color it in because I just really wanted to see if I could do it and I was able to do it. And this is the card that I made and I use that last stamp that I showed you, Shops. That's this. Shops. And so how you do this is you cut your half of your half. You cut your card to five and a half by eight. Oh, let me start by 11. So all you do is cut down your card stock directly in half. 
That's it. Just cut your cardstock directly in half. And then you have two pieces to make this seam. I cut this one down. Um, no, I'm wrong. You won't have two pieces because if you have an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, then you have that, that extra piece because it has to be eight and a half by um, eight and a half by 11 or eight and a fourth by 11. So you, you have a, that extra piece left over. So when I cut this piece of cardstock, I had this extra piece. This extra piece left over from cutting this cardstock down. Okay, so what you do is you cut your cardstock to a, um, five and a half, five and a quarter, however long, wide you want your card to be. Then you have that one long piece. So then what you do is you take the center... Um, no. First thing you do is you score from the end of each side, so both ends, three and five eighths. You, but don't fold them, don't do anything to them, just score them at three and five eighths. Once you're done scoring, you put a little dot one inch down in the center. And that's just a small dot, and it's a pencil mark. So just put your little pencil mark right there so it'll come up. And then you flip your card over and you put a pencil mark two and a half down by, I mean, two and a half, yeah, two and a half from the top. On this side, one and a half from this side. That's it. You just want to know where you're marking your um, design at. That's it. Uh, and it differs with each one, kind of how you want your card to end up being. But one has to be stamped lower, while the other one is stamped higher. That is why you want it um, from the top. Two and a half from the top. So you, this is uh, two and a half here. So you can put your stamp up higher. And this one is... Um, one and a half, so it's considered it's lower, as it were. However, it works out. You got to step one lower. So I would say, like I was watching the video, so I would say put it maybe a half an inch from the bottom here, and maybe a uh, that's two and a half, maybe starting out at an inch from here. So a half an inch or a quarter of an inch to a half an inch from here, and an inch and a half from there. An inch. Let me see. Where did I draw that at? Yeah, I did. That, that's, um, that's, no, that's an inch and a quarter. So, you need an inch and a quarter from here and a half an inch from here. And that's just kind of to get them in the right direction. But it's up to you. Please do trial and error to see what works for you. Which This is just one of my trials and errors so I can see how it looks. So then when you do that, you come back to the front and you stamp this center. You just put that right in the center of your, well, you make that mark in the center. See, this is off, but this is just my tester. So you put it right in the center between the two of these. I would say if you wanted to put it directly center, depending on what you're um, doing, put it on your MISTI or something like that, a stamp position or something to get it directly where you need to get it um, to make sure it's correct. And then once you get done with that, I, I stamped my sentiment last, but you can stamp your sentiment or not include a sentiment or however you want to do it. But then you flip over and you take one stamp on the one stamp that you want on this side and the stamp you want on this side. The directions in the package says to do this one on this side and this one on this side. So it can look or resemble how the picture looks see if you if you imagine this piece of paper flipped over this is here and this is there right and so that's how they asking you to do it right so then you flip your paper over and you take the the right side and you fold it in and you bone fold it um crease it because you've already scored it and so you secure that score line really well on this side 
and then you do the same thing on this side. This paper cracks because this is that 120 pound paper. So this is very thick paper, so it cracks. Um, but you can do it on any size paper, depending on if you're watercolor and you use watercolor paper or whatever you want to use. Um, and there you go. You have, um, you have them folded. Okay, so then what you do is you go and cut around this. You don't have to make uh, such sharp, like I sharp angle that. You don't have to. You can cut around as far as, or as close to it as you want. But you got to cut around it because the point of it all is, is to show all the si all the pictures. The try is to show it. So you cut around, fussy cut around, or take something that you can cut. You, you can do anything with it. You don't have to necessarily cut it so close. You could just cut it with a die or something to make it look really pretty with a wave or something like that and cut it. Then you do the same thing for this side. You go in here and you cut it, and you don't. You can follow the the, the route or, or whatever if you want to. It's up to you how you want it to look. But then when you're done, you want to fold this over. So I literally could go in here and cut off this. I could go and cut off that extra piece. It doesn't matter wherever you want to cut it because the top piece is going to fold over over that so you can cut it as long as it's not over here like don't cut it short or to look weird cut it past that you know what that's weird okay you know what I did I did the wrong direction I'm supposed to stamp it by the way the, the picture looks this should have been stamped lower. Looks like they... That is not what these directions... Oh, yes, it is. It should have been an inch from the bottom. So I should have brought this down some more. So it should have been right about there. So that's what an inch. Mm, Three-fourths. So I should have brought this down more to the bottom. By what the picture looks like. But you can do it whichever way you like you don't have to do it the way they're doing it um but what i did notice is i should have brought it closer to this line over here see all this room it should have been closer that way you see how you, you can let's let's do one how about that i think we should do it and see how we can come out right because obviously it didn't come out right. So it tells you to cut it to five and three fourths, but I'm cutting cutting mine to five and a, and a half, only because I kind of want a bigger piece of paper. That piece of paper seems very small, and I'm not going to um, do those side lines because I want it to be where I want it to be. Okay, so three and five eighths by three and five eighths is where I'm scoring it but I'm not folding it do not fold it in yet just keep it the way where it is okay and I'm using the same one that I used before let me back you out this is the same one I used before except this time I'm going to use my stamping platform, and it's too big. Mm. Whoa. So I need to go get my bigger platform. You know what? I have my Tim Holtz right here. That's the one thing. That's the one thing that they did do different. They gave edges. Uh, so you didn't have to worry about edges on this thing. Which is why I, don't, why I like it. There's that other magnet. I knew I had another one. Okay, so I'm gonna fold them that way. This is the back side. And the reason why I know it's the back side is because this is where my score line lines are. Okay, so you want to put your design in the center. 
have to stand up to do this. Um, and if you look at this, you want to put it an inch from the top in the center. So you want to put it about an inch from the top, centered. And I'm eyeballing the inch from the top, but I could use a ruler. Okay, because this says, cut your pea paper, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's why I looked weird. It's supposed to be a half inch from the top. So I'm moving it over. Circling it off. And that's about center. Okay. And then I'm using some jet black ink from the Quick Dry from Crafter's Companion and to stamp this right in the center okay stamp is weird no this is me I'm weird because I'm trying to get it straight on but is it straight on yeah it's straight on it's my my um stamp is not this needs to be like that let me stamp it. what i'm trying to do is make sure that this stamp is straight on the paper oh, that's even crooked more crooked i need to bring it this way more i'm just making sure that when i stamp this correctly that is straight and i have to figure that out. Okay, really? Okay, that's it. When you put this stamp on your stamping block, you have to make sure that it's tilted to an on an angle. Because if you don't make sure it's on an angle, then your paper is going to turn out wrong. It's going to, that house or that, it's going to be crooked. It's going to be crooked. And so you have to make sure when you're stamping this that you don't stamp it um, the way, straight up and down the way we know it to be because it's at an angle. I'm going to have to look at the... Um, I'm, I'm going to have to stamp them out from now on beforehand. Okay. Just to make sure that they're right when I stamp it. Okay. So now this should... You'll be... It still should be centered. It might be a little bit high though. Because I think it's going to be a little bit high. I'm going to pull my paper down just a little bit. I think it's going to be a little bit high. Okay. What I've noticed is this that when I stamp also, that I over stamp. 
so I'm just cleaning off my edges before I stamp down. Okay, let's see where this gets us. Okay, that's better. Much, much better. Even though I still got ink up there, but this is my tester. And so I know I need to clean my stamp better and make sure that this ink is all taken off around the edges. That and I have a, I have a sand eraser so I can erase that. Or I can just take a gel pen, a white gel pen, and cover it up. Um... Just take a white gel pen and cover those up. Um, plus, my sky is going to be the color anyway. But this is a test. Okay, then you take the piece of paper and you flip it over. Ooh okay, and you flip it over. And now your design is right here. You want to trifold this way and this way. So when you trifold this way, you have to make sure that you put the right design on the right side, the side that it goes on, right? So the little store has to go close to your line, to your fold line, but about, mm, what did I say, three-fourths up, but about an inch away from, a half inch or so, away from this line okay let's see what this is going to give us so I'm trying to be careful these ink pads are new fresh and wet very wet fresh ink pads okay Okay. Um, this is a test. I'm not gonna mess with it and double stamp. I'm not gonna try to double stamp. Um, so let me clean this off. I probably could have just pressed down some more. Okay. And I'm gonna lift this up and I'm going to turn it around. And take this one, and this one needs to be about a half an inch from the bottom. Maybe about a half an inch over. Because they, they, if you read the directions, they will explain to you. The packaging does have instructions on the inside. So if you look in it, Look at this, it has instructions and it tells you what to do. I'm just cleaning off that old rich of ink. But these ink pads are very juicy. They are very juicy. I love it. That they have a lot of ink. my over spillage without wiping off the ink okay and then we're gonna do this side I'm just trying to press right there where it says open because there's plenty of ink on this pad okay
all right. And so this is what the design looks like, what the card looks like. And once you get them, they're all different. So you have to make sure that you do what they all say, no matter what what you do with the first one, depending on what the, how the design is shaped. One is smaller, like this house is much larger. You have to follow the directions on the package to tell you um, how far to go. Or play around with it and do your own designs. Because just because it tells you it, doesn't mean you have to necessarily just go with it. You want to do some of your own design. It's just a guidepost to train you how to use your um train you how to use your new um stuff so i'm gonna take this bone folder no before you take the bone folder and do any bone folding or anything you need to cut off the design after you color it in so you would at this point you would color it in to how you want it to look and then you would begin your fussy cutting and you can cut as far or as close as you like. You don't have to cut um, right on it. The only thing is when you get to the top, you should try to cut it at an angle or something. You, don't, you can go straight across if you want. It doesn't matter. But you have to make sure that you cut it. Um, So then when it's folded, you see it, okay? And then you do the same thing for this side. You cut it. And you can cut it close if you like or not. It's up to you. I think um, when they make these, they, they had very good intuition about doing something different. And it was really, really nice. So... Then you turn your design back over and you put your sentiment or not. You can leave it blank so when people get this, they can put their own sentiment in it. But what you do is you go follow your score lines and you fold it over and burnish. And make sure you don't use paper like I do that is so thick that it cracks. But this paper cracks. It's really made for die cutting. I think that's what I bought, I bought this for, was die cutting. But I use it a lot. And there you have it. I don't know what they're playing. My puppies are playing. And there you have it. The tri-fold card. I think that it would be nice to follow these stairs with this one. Because this one is still good for me to be able to do something with. And then maybe I can come across this way. And see, this is the, your own trial and error. You do what you like with your designs. And so, there you go. And now I have the staircase and then the cafe and then the town. And once I, colored all the, once I color it all, it all goes together. And... This is what it looks like when you look at it. Isn't that gorgeous? I can't wait to color this in um, and put a nice message in the inside. I think it looks really cute. What do you think? Do you have the trifold cards? Let me know down in the description box if you have the trifold cards. Or if you want to try the trifold cards. If you think that this will make a good class where we can stamp the trifolds, let me know in the description box if you think it'll be wonderful to try the trifolds. Thank you so much. Thank you to our impressions for being so innovative and coming out with this type of thing for us. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one.